Hey everybody again, Ms. Baker's Corner. Hope you're doing well. We're gonna focus our attention today on one really important aspect of your historical thinking, and that is how do we understand the basic nuts and bolts of how to write a good historically defensible essay that includes things like thesis, context, um, support paragraphs that basically take the reader back to what you wanna argue and how to support it with good evidence and also good analysis or reasoning. And so we're gonna look at all these different elements and at the end of this, you should be able to have a good understanding of that. You should be able to apply what you've learned toward it, and you should be prepared to basically produce your first essay plan, which will be your next assignment. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we think of essays, we think of writings, we think of a bunch of words that are basically put down on paper or, or whatever it might be. And we think of, guys, things that allow us to prove what we know. All right. Now, essays are not going to require the student to go over every single little detail that they know. And the reason being is because many of these guys are going to be planned and therefore timed, okay? So what that means is that when it's a timed writing, you might not have time to go into, um, you know, let's say great detail about every single thing. So you're gonna have to decide, how do I understand a concept within a question and how do I use selective evidence and reasoning to answer it? Let's consider the prompt in front of us and, and think about step one, which is how do we really read a prompt? How do we break it down? What is it really asking us to do? That is the first step of being able to effectively plan and also write. So the last three weeks, if you're in my class, we've been studying the early development of the executive branch of the presidency. We studied presidents from Washington to Adams to Jefferson, all the way through, of course, Madison and Monroe. Now what we want to do, guys, is we want to ask ourselves the question, how can we really show an understanding of their effects on the United States within that time period and how that's going to potentially affect the country moving forward? Well, the background of this is we have these five presidents. We have Adams. We have um, you know, Washington first, of course. We have Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. But each of them in their own way, if you think about it, have all addressed both domestic and foreign policy issues or problems or things that affected the nation, that they all have to make a decision. How do we make a decision as the president that is gonna be hopefully in the best interest of the United States and what are gonna be the long-term consequences and effects? Now, for some of them, they don't see those effects right away. For others of them, like Jefferson that lives to be you know, uh, in his 80s and he lives until 1826, he does get to see the effects of some of his policies, some for the better, some potentially for not so, so positive. But that's where the young up and coming writer has to basically think about evidence and make judgments on how to use it. So domestic would be, okay, what are we talking about? What are the things that happen within the country that affect the citizens right here within the boundaries of the country, okay? And then we also want to think about foreign policy, okay? What kinds of things involve our relationship with the outside world? Well, look at the, what the prompt requires you to do. Washington's presidency established precedents. What is a precedent? We'll come back to that. And policies that set the stage for the development of the executive branch. We know that Washington's the first guy in office. So everything that he does, in a sense, is precedental. The way that he makes decisions about the economy and how to enforce law and all those things. Okay. And we want to analyze the extent to which the next four are going to basically follow his policies to guide their decisions. In other words, are they going to do exactly what Washington did? Or are they going to use basically their own way of thinking, politics, viewpoints, whatever word you want to use for it, guys, to drive? the decision-making that they actually have as president. And as a lot of you guys should know, they are going to adhere to some, but of course, they're gonna define the office to an extent on their own terms. We wanna consider decisions that these four presidents made. Controversial actions. What is controversial? Things that elicited a response that obviously were very critical of those actions, okay? and ways in which their administrations affected the nation. 
All of you have heard of what's called short term and long term. Short term is probably within the next two to five years, I would say perhaps. Long term could be consequences that go maybe 10 years down the line, maybe even 20, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so as the historian guys, we want to be thinking of the effects that these have with our analysis and also with how we're going to use our evidence. So stop here, guys, for a moment, pause your screen, have a piece of paper out perhaps, and brainstorm what this prompt is really asking of you. Did you have a few minutes to do that? So what are we being asked to do? What we are not being asked to do is to simply write an essay that puts every president from Adams through Monroe in chronological order. Could you do that? You could. But what I would suggest is that you think about topics that you can use to formulate claims that eventually lead to a solid thesis. All right, that's gonna be one of our steps down the line in, in the next few slides, okay? And so think about it like this. All right, step two, all right? So we have the prompt broken down. We know what it's asking us to do. Uh, we know that we gotta write an essay that connects different presidencies, um, comparing, contrasting what they had to, to do with Washington as the first one. Now the question is, how do we organize our plan? We fail to plan, we plan to fail, okay? Now, my suggestion is if you are doing this essay in a time, 40 minute fashion, that you take about five minutes to really think about this plan. If you have a little bit more time to write it, which for honor students you probably have at least a few days or whatever, then you want to put maybe a little bit more time into it. But one way or the other, guys, evidence, analysis, and how you're going to link it is going to be effective with how you develop that thesis statement, okay? So what do we wanna be able to do pre-writing? What comes to mind when you think of the early presidencies? Pre-writing does not necessarily have to be an outline to start off with, but it can be anything from, okay, I know that Adams did this, I know that Jefferson did this, I know that uh, Madison did this, I know that um, Monroe did this. Now what I wanna know is that, how am I gonna selectively use the evidence? Keep in mind, Timed essays are exactly that. You have to pick and choose the evidence that you want to use that's the most effective. The key word is effective. We want to develop a thesis based off of how we're going to go about tackling this question. We want to provide what's called historical context, which we'll see on our, in a few slides from now. That is one of the more important things that a student will want to do in his or her introduction. It sets the entire tone for what you're gonna move on to with your thesis, okay? Brainstorm possible topic sentences for your support paragraphs. All right, we'll come back to that. And then last two things, assemble, piece together, both knowledge and reasoning, okay? Those two components are going to be essential, as we'll see you guys here in a moment, with really helping to build an effective argument or to support an effective argument, okay? And then also explain, not just describing a fact, but explaining its connection to why it supports your argument and your evidence, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is, this is step three, is we want to be able to do two things well with an introductory paragraph. We want to be able to show the context. Now, if you need to stop the screen here for a moment, guys, feel free to. But in, in actuality, a context is doing several things. You know, some of you have heard you know, the term, you know, um, you know um, kind of like a, a hook. Okay, well, context does more than just hooking the reader but it does get the reader's attention. The thing that I like to ask students, guys, when they write this essay, when I read it, is do you show me that you really understand what is leading up to this essay, all right? It opens a door to your main argument, so you're setting the tone, you're addressing what influences that shape the given situation. 
We're going to come back to that in our example here in a moment. And you're providing background that shapes the argument that you're about ready to make. A lot of students ask the question, how long does something need to be? I would say that when you're trying to display context, three to four sentences minimum. And this is going to precede your thesis. So I want you to think back to the prompt that you just saw on the previous slide. All right. Or one of the previous slides. We're knowing that we have domestic and foreign policy things that we need to address. We know that we have presidents that are beyond George Washington. So pause your screen for just a moment and ask yourself, okay, what is going to be the context that sets up a thesis that deals with the four presidents after Washington? What are they going to be? You got to know a little bit about Washington to make good context with him. What did he do regarding, you know, let's say supporting an economic plan that, by the way, was not entirely his own? What did Washington do as far as supporting presidential policy toward foreign policy? Okay. What did Washington do that supported the idea of precedence with dealing with things like people not wanting to follow federal law? Your context is going to be specific facts that basically set the reader up, guys, that you know what Washington is basically trying to do as president so that you can compare, contrast, evaluate, you know, that prompt by the future presidents after him, okay? That is a really important thing for you to keep in mind, okay? So if you have three or four really good ideas that you can explain and basically describe as well, then you probably have your context ready to set up. In this prompt, guys, your context absolutely must be the administration of Washington. Now, not every prompt is going to give you that explicitly. This one, however, does. So, how do we develop a thesis? Okay, now you all have probably done writings before where your teachers have said to you, okay, a thesis is going to be effective when it basically does one big thing, and that is takes an effective position for you to make an argument. Look at what it says. A thesis allows you to make a claim about what you want to prove with your essay that basically is um, sometimes difficult to prove, okay? Um, something that requires evidence and reasoning. This is why the suggestion is that before you start to really craft your thesis, the word craft is important, guys, to develop it, to kind of, you know, put it into practice or whatever, that you really do some pre-writing and even outlining, all right? Why? Because when you develop a thesis, all right, a minimum of three support paragraphs is what I suggest. If you can work that in, especially if it's a time writing, if it's not a time writing, then probably three is more to the minimum for sure, okay? But you want to be able to divide these support paragraphs, and we'll look at this more in a moment, into a topic sentence that directly goes back to your thesis. Pieces of evidence, three per paragraph. These need to be proper nouns, concepts, people, events that happen. And not just fact dropping, not just the idea that, okay, I'm going to mention a fact and make sure that my teacher or whoever's reading it, guys, knows what I mean. Okay, the writer has a job to do. The job of the writer is to effectively explain and describe and, and analyze to show the reader, okay, I got this. Okay, connecting with reasoning. And then the question is, guys, you might want to pause here for a second. If you are trying to develop an essay that's based, that's topical, that's based around three topics related to presidents two, three, four, and five, and you want to really kind of go into some detail about that, my question to all of you is, is to stop your screen and ask yourself the question, what topics would I select? Think about what we've already talked about. Things like foreign policy, things like domestic issues, Things like similarities and differences. 
between the way that some of these future presidents acted, like Washington or on the other side not. So stop there, brainstorm this. You should have a topic, evidence, two or three pieces for sure, and then the reasoning. Okay, what'd you get? This is a sample of how you could brainstorm this prompt pretty effectively. Okay, so if I was writing this, I would wanna go over how does, and this is not guys one size fits all, but just an example here. I would wanna ask myself the question, all right, there's definitely the development of political parties. We've seen that during Washington. So again, that's a common theme that you may be pointed out in your context, okay? Um, how do we see that? You'll notice, I don't even mention this president specifically, but you could, okay? And probably should as you analyze, okay? And so you've got evidence. We see the Sedition of Alien Acts. We see that election of 1800, that revolution that President um, Jefferson talks about. And we also see division over the War of 1812. So those are all things that if I'm writing, I'm going to describe. What are the two early political parties? What positions do they have? What is the election of 1800? How does it get solved? Um, a lot of you guys should know that. All right, it's not something that just the election victory happens, the House declares it. No, it takes some time for the House to decide. All right, the Electoral College, excuse me. Okay, and then the House later on. All right, but look at the reasoning. I'm not going to go over all these. You can read them. But how do the acts lead to that cause and effect of nullification and division? Okay, that goes beyond the details of just simply telling me what does the Alien Act do and what does the Sedition Act do? And what are the long-term effects? How does this divide the country politically moving forward? Same thing to an extent when you're looking at the War of 1812, when you're looking at even sectional conflict. Who was more against the war? The North. Why? That's something for you to further analyze. That is, guys, where you're getting into your reasoning for how you're using your evidence with historical arguments. Okay, you'll notice here ter territory expansion and impact. This is not something that's just unique to Jefferson, but you'll notice, guys, here again, all that territory that he bought does not want to become just territories and that's it. They want to become states eventually. How does that create a different set of complications between the purchase in the earlier 1800s and even moving until? you know, the latter days of, of um, Jefferson's life in the 1820s, or late teens and early 1820s. And then America's place in the world. Think about that, guys. Whenever we talk about foreign policy, we're basically thinking about how does our relationship in the world get affected by foreign policy, okay? So this is the way that you might go about outlining for those of you that choose to do this, there's different ways you can go about doing this. This is a suggested way, okay? But you'll notice again, don't worry too much about the, the immediate and preceding context, but just keep in mind that context will go in front of your thesis. And we haven't even gotten to guys putting a thesis in there with um, solid development, okay? But guess what we see? Claim, which is gonna be what you're trying to do, guys, that body paragraph claim, that first sentence should always go back to your argument. How are you trying to support that argument? Now, let's say that your thesis might be something along the lines. This is just a quick example. It's probably not the best, but just an example. It's adequate. You know, that presidents following um, Washington, uh, such as John Adams, put into effect policies that reflected political party. Um, let's say preferences, whereas other future presidents did policies with foreign policy or foreign you know, issues or whatever that actually expanded the country's territory. All of these had long-term consequences and had varying, let's say, um, effects on the country within and also following James Monroe's presidency. Okay. And then what you could say is, let's say you want to start off that paragraph with 
let's say, political parties, you know, what a good claim would not be is simply saying John Adams came after George Washington as president. That's not really a claim. But what a good claim would be is that future presidents such as John Adams and also Thomas Jefferson illustrated the developing presence of political parties and the division that would continue to be present within those factions moving beyond the era of Washington. Okay, what does that statement do? First of all, it's more complex and it also will go back to a thesis that we'll get to here in a second. Okay, what that also does is it puts you in a position to use a variety of different kinds of evidence related to a variety of different presidents. You know, you could easily show that disagreement between the Alien and Sedition Acts with Jefferson as vice president, and then go into, of course, how, you know, the way that his election of 1800 was handled, and the way that, of course, other things affecting parties continue to move on. Disagreements about things like taxation, you know, different interpretations of the Constitution toward actions of, of, of um, Jefferson, how Jefferson struggles to an extent you could say, or maybe struggles not the best word, but actually has to deal with, you know, using federalist principle to achieve his ultimate goals. Okay. So that's what you want to do with those claims. Okay. So when you have that outline established, then the question is, okay, how do we develop a solid thesis that we can then start to basically support with our writing? Okay, well, first of all, a thesis is historically defensible. It's a claim about reasons that relate to why you wanna make an argument, okay? You can reference evidence that will help prove your argument, okay? One word that some of you have come across if you've taken AP in the past, is a line of reasoning, okay? Must not be vague or simply restate your question. And it should not be after you establish, I'm sorry, it should be, pardon me guys, after we establish context, okay? So I want you to think, pause your camera for a second or your screen and ask yourself, okay, in my previous thing, I had four things that established context with why Washington's presidency was so essential to understand what I'm gonna argue about the other presidents. What I want you to do is to basically write a thesis statement that does a couple of things well, okay? Now remember, you do not have to address all four presidents that come after Washington. I would prefer that you do this more conceptually, but conceptually meaning you're looking at trends, themes, topics, et cetera, okay? But you're gonna have to basically bring that description of those presidents into your evidence. So stop there and when you're done with your thesis, go ahead and basically turn the screen back on and you'll see a little bit more. Okay. How did you write a thesis that went back to the idea of proving the topics that you chose? Okay. And we'll look at that a little bit later if time allows. Okay. Once you have your thesis and it's something that you can defend, it's not just a restatement of the question. It's not just giving basic categories like there were foreign policy and domestic you know, things that all of them dealt with, which is technically the, you know, in the prompt, as you know, or in the background, then you are ready to move on to the idea of support paragraphs, okay? A good support paragraph is gonna have four things. One is a purpose with a topic sentence. This topic sentence, to be effective, guys, always goes back to what you're trying to prove. In other words, your argument in your thesis statement, all right? How does this argument, or I'm sorry, how does this statement, guys, basically support the argument that you're trying to make? Secondly, the purpose of evidence. Now, we just said this, guys, a moment ago. You don't have the time 
to use every single fact. I'm not grading you on you using every single fact. What we are evaluating is one, the facts that you're using help drive your argument. They're well described, meaning that you're giving some detail to what they are and not just fact checking. All right. And they're vital to help prove your point. The minimum here is three, but remember proper nouns, events, people, concepts. Okay. Reasoning. This is the explanation. A lot of uh, people call this the because of your use of evidence. Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase is a perfect example of expanding federal power, even though he was more a Democratic Republican because, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. What is the explanation? You're giving reasoning for why that evidence is helping you to defend you know, your position on political parties or your position on the effects of land ownership and its expansion or whatever. Okay, guys, what you'll notice is that your paragraphs, if you use this model and transitions look at too, these paragraphs are going to be fairly detailed. And they should be. Because essentially you're trying to use evidence, analysis, and of course, you know, everything else that, you, that you're looking at to be able to put together a well thought out defense of your claim, okay? I would like for you to take five minutes of your time, even if this is gonna be rough, you'll, you'll revise it later on, and I want you to basically write a support paragraph that helps prove the thesis that you created on the previous um, assignment or practice. Okay. A couple of things. How did you bring that back to your thesis with your opening topic sentence? Okay. Secondly, what evidence did you use? Did you analyze it? Did you reason? All right, those are all things that we want to keep in mind. Um, it's suggested that about eight to 10 sentences is probably going to be what you want to use. Think about it like this, guys. It's almost like creating a sandwich. The piece of bread starts off with your topic sentence. The piece of bread ends with basically your transition that goes on to your next topic and connects everything in between, whether you like jelly, peanut butter, whatever it might be, pardon the allergies if you have peanut allergies, but you get the point, guys, is basically everything in between that you're using to help basically support what you're trying to prove, okay? So for your week four assignment, all right, your, your assignment for day two, you already had this, so you can start working on it if you want. You wanna have a concept assignment this week. You're basically going to have to produce the following. And a template is available for you to use to submit. An introductory paragraph. In that introductory paragraph, we're looking for you to develop three to four, maybe more, solid sentences that sets up context for the exact same question that we started this activity with and a historically defensible thesis. That is the last statement. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. A thesis statement can be more than one sentence. Okay, so guys, if you're noticing you're seeing a lot of run-ons, I would rather you have two sentences that basically clarify that. All right, that's not a deal breaker. Some teachers are support otherwise. Go with your teacher if you're watching this for another class or whatever. Um, but for me, that's something I would suggest. Two, you're going to create a list of evidence. Now, if you've already done that with this activity, then guess what? You just got to put it into your, your assignment and you're good. Okay? But here's the thing. You must show with reasoning how you intend to use that evidence to prove your thesis. In other words, descriptions, ideas, et cetera. Okay? And then thirdly, you want to think about and write about 
one support paragraph. I want you to pick one of your topics. Maybe this is one that you feel like you have the strongest amount of evidence to really help. And the other ones you got to kind of think a little bit further and that's okay guys. Okay. But I want you to create one support paragraph. Now you're probably going to revise what you did on the previous um, activity and that's okay. You can add to it, you know, abbreviate whatever, not abbreviate, but actually, you know, uh, change it or whatever. Okay. Modify it. But I want it to model that four part approach. Topic sentence, going back to your thesis. Evidence, well explained and described. Okay. And the reasoning that shows why that evidence supports the conclusions that you're trying to make the argument with. And then also a good transition. Okay. You will submit this to Canvas. Um, as always, if you have any questions, if you were at the, uh, the segment or session day, then you got to walk, walk through this a little, with a little bit more direction. All right, but guys, feel free to contact me, bakerd at franklinacademy.org. There will be clear directions on what to do with each one of these parts as it is here and the assignment directions. All right, and so please let me know. Appreciate your time. It's been great to kind of walk through you. We will build upon our skills. Remember, there's no substitute for practice as one of my college professors used to tell me many times. And so therefore, guys, hope you're doing well. Hope this session was helpful, and I hope you all stay safe. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.